In 2004, a 24-year-old kid from the Northwest made a splash at the top series in NASCAR, becoming the Cup Series Rookie of the Year. Casey Kane made a name for himself as the quiet, blue-eyed wheelman. Over 15 years in the series, he won 18 times, including his last win at the 2017 Brickyard 400. In 2018, though, Kane abruptly left the sport due to health issues. He's been out of the spotlight now for two years, so I figured it was a good time to catch up and ask about his health, fatherhood, and his desire to maybe race in NASCAR again. And it's been a while, but hard to believe it's been almost two years since Casey Kane walked away from the NASCAR Cup Series. And Casey, it's so good to see you. How are you during all this crazy quarantine time? Uh, yeah, I'm doing actually doing pretty good. Uh, it seems like each week that goes by, it kind of becomes a little more normal. I have a hard time just not having a lot going on and doing things. So it was tough at first, and now it just gets a little more normal each week, it seems. And I know you're so close with your little boy, Tanner, who's adorable. How has the homeschooling and entertaining him every day been going? It's been fine. I mean, he's uh, he has a lot of fun, no matter, you know, what we have going on. But he, you know, has a little bit of school going on, his preschool stuff that they do on Zoom. And um, and then he's just either here or with Sam. So, yeah, he's he's doing really good. He's having fun. And so am I. So, are, you know, all of us together. It's been great. So how about racing? Any interest yet by Tanner in racing? No, nothing yet. I mean, really everything we do, he, he's always racing. It's like, I have to, we're racing on feet. We're racing. He has his little scooter that he rides, you know, everywhere. And um, so he's always trying to race me on that. And so that's a lot of fun, but he uh, like, as far as cars go and things, he's, he's not really into it at all. And it's, his cousin Eli is and has a mini sprint and things and Tanner will go and hang out with him and, you know, be close to that. But he, for himself, hasn't, hasn't said a word yet about actually driving. Is that something that you hope that he gets interested in or are you cool with not? I'm fine either way, but if he does get interested in it, I think it'd be great because, you know, I've just, I've done it for, for so long and have a lot of experience there. I think I could help him out a lot and, you know, and really enjoy it. You know, I still yeah. enjoy racing so much. It'd be pretty cool if Tanner did, but I'd completely leave it to him. If he starts pushing me and really wanting it down the road, I think that would be, that'd be pretty cool. But I didn't start till I was 14. So, you know, there's so many kids now that start super young and, um, and I think that's good as well. But yeah, I think he can be a little older than, than some these days and be perfectly fine. Yeah. So you started racing about 15, as you said, but it was such a big part of your life. I mean, you were in the Cup Series for almost 15 years. And then to just walk away and we don't see you at the track. And, you know, how has that transition been like? Uh, oh, there's been... Tanner. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been, it's been really good. You know, the transition, it, it gets tough at times. And I think the longer I've been out, I, I seriously miss it more and more and more. And... Um, you know, and I feel like I'm, like my body in a way is recovered. I was really struggling those last couple of years with, you know, just the hot races and, you know, being dehydrated and my weeks were, you know, kind of rough for the first three to four days of the week. So, um, yeah, having a year and a half off has actually been really nice. I feel really good again and, and feel, you know, better than I did probably three, three years ago. So, I, at times it's like, man, I want to race cup. I want to race, race a truck, Xfinity, sprint cars, whatever it may be. And, um, but I just haven't, haven't really done any of it yet at this point. If somebody were to call or maybe they have already, what would you say? Uh, I would have to really think about it because I've, you know, it's been, it's been a little while, but I definitely, you know, I, I enjoy that stuff and I miss it. I watch every race on TV. Um, you know, I go to a lot of the sprint car races with Brad Sweet and James McFadden and their team. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I stay pretty close to it. I just haven't done it myself. And, uh, yeah, like I said, the longer I'm away, the, the kind of the more I, I want to get back in the car. Yeah, definitely. Well, 
we would love to have you back, of course, but you, you mentioned the health issues. And, and I remember when you were going through this and talking to you and, and the struggles, gosh, you could forget winning here in Indy and you were exhausted, but you still pulled off the win. What exactly, take us back to that time. What were you going through physically and did they ever figure it out truly? Uh, I think the, the biggest thing was, is, you know, just the, the way I felt and the, my, I was always so tired. My eyes were tired. Um, my body just ached, you know, a lot of the time just because I was, for whatever reason, I just was so dehydrated and I couldn't get it. You know, like the longer the season went, the worse it would get. And um, it was all, you know, salt, basically sodium, you know, that I just had, didn't have any of. So I don't know. Um, I'm not sure really where I, what it was. The things that get to me though, is like winning Indy and not really, like, I don't really remember a whole lot of it other than winning the race and looking at the pictures and all that. And that was, you know, really cool. But uh, I mean, it is to see today, but I just, I was out of it during that whole victory lane, the next hour of everything, you know, I was in the care center for a while. So, you know, stuff like that was a bit ruined, but uh, we still were able to pull that win off and, um, and other ones as well throughout the career. So it was, it was good, but yeah, the ending was just kind of rough and it, it was that way for a little while. So it was, it was time to be done with it until I could figure something better out. Yeah. Unreal. And you happen to be one of the fittest guys. You were so into fitness. So it was such a conundrum, I think for everybody, you included to figure out what is going on with Casey. He's so healthy. Yeah. That didn't matter. I guess being fit for, for that stuff didn't matter. Yeah. So what are you doing now to stay fit? Are you into cycling still and all of that? Yeah. I mean, I actually, uh, do a good bit of cycling, running, uh, workouts and things every week. So it's, uh, yeah, I stay really into it and, um, you know, could do about anything right now. I feel as good as I felt in a long time. So yeah, I probably work out four or five, five times a week and then just, you know, running around with Tanner and, and doing a lot of things throughout the week. It's all, all pretty good. That's awesome. Now, do you stay in touch with anybody from the cup series or ever see them on bike rides or anything, obviously before the quarantine? kind of just done my own thing really you know I don't uh I haven't seen a whole lot of a lot of people at all I still you know text and talk a little bit here and there with with different guys from uh from the cup stuff but I, I actually just got a hard card and then I was going to Atlanta it was gonna be my first race since uh what have it been Darlington and I was going to Atlanta I was excited to go to my first cup race and uh then then everything went down and didn't go so you know, I'll be, I'll be at some once racing starts again, for sure. Oh, that'll be awesome to get to see you there. But I just love the idea that you're open to coming back, maybe to race in any of the levels, if the right phone call came around. Yeah. I mean, I would definitely think about it for sure. It's uh, yeah, it's kind of, kind of interesting how your mind and body, like things change as time goes on, but uh, I just feel a lot better today. And I still, you know, have such passion for racing and haven't really left any of it. I just haven't been driving myself, but I've stayed really close as, you know, to uh, as much of it as I can. Yeah. And as we're seeing now, so many of the current drivers are really into iRacing, whether they were before or they're just learning it. Have you been staying on top of this iRacing stuff on TV and are you into it yourself? Um, I've been watching the iRacing on TV. Um, I haven't had my own iRacing set up yet. I, I did a little bit of it a few years back and uh, not, not much, just a little bit and enjoyed it. But yeah, right now is when you really need it, it seems like, because it could, you know, pass a lot of time and have some fun with it. So I've, I'm working on that. I have a, uh, some stuff coming soon. So I'm going to, you know, get into it some. Yeah. Well, as you've seen, Fox was first to like go for it and put it on network TV and it's been great. I think it's fulfilling something that we're all lacking who love racing and are used to seeing it every weekend. Yeah. I think at least it's live too, you know, like it's uh, it's something that we don't know the outcome of most of the things that are on TV right now, you know, the outcome, if you've paid attention <laughs> to that sport or that type of, uh, you know, that, that show or whatever. So yeah, it's, uh, it's nice to have something a little bit that's fresh and, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, so yeah, I've paid attention and watched all of it. Casey, there's still a lot of your fans out there and, and many of them remember this, this period in time where you were in these commercials all state, right? 
yeah. and the women are falling over themselves and you became like this heartthrob in NASCAR and you had your popularity skyrocketed but you're such a shy kind of quiet person what was that whole kind of period of time like for you well that was it was interesting because those were some of my first commercials as well and when I first got into cup they you know there's more commercials and things like that going on with sponsors so yeah it was super hard for me to do that stuff and then as each year went on and we did more of it and more of it it got to where it was pretty fun and those girls were always a good time just to you know they were being their side of the commercial and I was my side of the commercial and uh, we had a lot of fun with it but I I think I came a long ways during those few years with Allstate and then had Budweiser after that who did some more you know spots and things so it was uh Great Clips did my first commercial was with Great Clips and then Allstate did a, a good bit of them and then Budweiser so yeah I had some pretty good stuff there for a while you were like the media darling for a while <laughs> so you talk about your your time in NASCAR almost 15 years like I said but you raced for some pretty incredible teams from Evernham. Then you went to Red Bull Racing, which a lot of people probably forgot about that period of your life. And then Hendrick Motorsports. What would you say was like the most fun era in Cup for you? So when I, I there was the, the Rockingham race was on from 04, my rookie season, uh, a couple or last weekend, I think. And uh, so watching that and just remembering the nine car and, and just the look of it, how it looked on the racetrack and, you know, kind of reviewing some of that stuff was, it was a really good period of my, you know, racing career and definitely NASCAR career, getting started there with Ray. I always felt like I'd just raced for Ray forever. Like I thought that was my spot and we would race until I was done and he would keep having other drivers, but it all changed up pretty quick. And um, so that was a great time of my career. I think looking at the most fun was with Red Bull because they had a lot of things going on and you were just able to enjoy it, have fun. And then we had great race cars and, and the team was Kenny Francis and some of the guys that were with me at Everham's that like made those cars go. So I really got, you know, I really thought the Red Bull days were, were a lot of fun. And then Hendrick, you know, 12 and 13, my first two years there, I thought we were as, as good as any of the Hendrick teams and, and, could compete with anyone on the track most weekends. Um, so that was a good time. And then after that, it just kind of all slowed down from there and, and things, you know, we were the fourth team at Hendrick, fourth best team and stuff like that. And just didn't, mm -hmm. didn't really perform a whole lot after that uh, on and off we did, but not consistently throughout a season. So I would say those years at Everham and Red Bull, ton of fun. Uh, and then the first two years at Hendrick were great. Yeah. And as you mentioned, those those years after that, it was a struggle. And then your health came into the picture. Was there any person during that time, Casey, that kind of helped you kind of put together a plan, an exit strategy and, and to help you through that transition of getting out of cup? And, and you never called it retirement, but you did walk away. Was there somebody that helped you? Uh, I mean, I would say, you know, I had a few people that were, were trying to help some, but really it all came so fast. I mean, it was, it was kind of, you know, a big part of my last couple of years for sure. But when I, Darlington, I knew like, I can't keep doing this because, you know, the last, say the last half of the race of Darlington that I was in, I just basically laid in the right side of it, like just laid in the seat and just finished the race and was, um, just completely out of it. So I knew at that point I needed to do something different or it's going to start hurting me. And so that's what I had to do was just kind of get out at that point in time, but it was all building up and that's all part of why I was, you know, getting out of the sport just because those, those couple of years there and just how I felt all the time. But um, yeah. And then Darlington was kind of the last, the last straw to it. Uh, so yeah, it happened way quicker than I would have expected. I always thought I'd race till I was, 43 or 44 years old, no problem, and be competitive to that time. And um, yeah, it changed quickly and I just kind of ended up having to get out. I would imagine it's it's gotta be kind of hard in a way watching like Clint Boyer and Denny Hamlin, these guys who came in basically at, this, as this, at the same time as you and they're still out there and they're competitive. Yeah, I mean, I still, I watch all that and, you know, see that, um, but yeah, 
I don't know. I don't know what to really think of it anymore. I, I still cheer those guys on when they win, when they do well. I, I text them and tell them great job and, and things. So it's, uh, you know, that side of it's all good. But yeah, just just those last two, three years, it was just tough and didn't work out. And then I yeah. did some sprint car racing and screwed that up as well at the beginning of last year. So I haven't, you know, done anything since in over a year. So that's, uh, yeah, it was just, it all happened pretty fast, really. And you mentioned your team, Casey Kane Racing. How does that kind of fulfill that desire and need to be involved? And how involved are you with the team? Yeah, I think it's always really, you know, fulfilled that side of it. Even when I went to Cup, because I was always a, a dirt guy, a sprint car guy, and that's where I learned. And then I moved to do some pavement, ended up in NASCAR and in the Cup Series fairly quickly. And um, But to have those teams have always, you know, really fulfilled that side of it. And I enjoy that, you know, so much. And today, all of last year, working closer with the teams than I ever have, just because I didn't have other things going on, was uh, it was actually a, had a ton of fun. It was a great season and enjoyed all of that. And I would, you know, keep doing that because I, I like it so much. Um, yeah, so it's a it's a big part of kind of me, and and I I really enjoy it to have a couple drivers, a couple teams um you know mechanics and things so we have a we have a good group of guys and and really have fun with that and you guys are good it helps when you get to win and go to victory lane too right yeah they're really good they've uh they work hard uh and and time you know kkr we've been around for since 05 06 now and it's like the longer the more experience each one of us kind of gains the better over our overall performances for an entire season and uh we have the right people right now and you know, just a lot more experience than we used to. So it's, uh, it's going pretty well. And I think we can carry it for a long time. Yeah, I'm sure it's a lot of fun going back to your roots too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. So let me get your opinion on this. So they just announced the new Hall of Fame um, nominees for the class of 2021. I don't know if you saw that, but some big names in there, Dale Earnhardt Jr., who you raced against for many years, Carl Edwards, Jeff Burton, Anybody stand out to you out of those that you feel like needs to be in that class right away? Um, I think, I mean, I, I think all of them will be in there for sure uh, eventually. And, and they all have a great shot to, to go right away. So I always like looking at that each year and seeing who the next group is and, and things because they're all, there's all a lot of reasons why each one of them is very deserving of that position. And, um, so yeah, so it's, it's neat to see that I've been down to the hall for plenty of, you know, the, the ceremonies and things leading into it and then the actual, uh, induct inductions and stuff. So it's, uh, it's a neat time. Last year, there was a great group as well. And, uh, I was there when Bill Elliott, uh, was part of, you know, part of that and Ray Evernham and different things. So it's been, it's good. It's a neat, um, thing that NASCAR does. I'm glad it's here in Charlotte and keeps us able to be close to it. Yeah, it's really fun. I, I'm lucky I get to be, um, you know, one of the voters, one, one, on, one of the few of us on the panel. I think there's 52 or 54 of us, but it's fun when you listen to the arguments back and forth, you know, because you, right. you can argue for somebody or against somebody at the same time, no matter how long ago they were in this sport or if they're current. So it's, it's interesting. Yeah, I'd say there's a lot that goes into all of that each year. Yeah. So Casey, during this transition, as you said, kind of when you walked away from the sport, you had already become a dad. Tanner was a big part of your life, but now you've been so one-on-one -on -one with him. How would you say fatherhood has changed you or helped you grow? Uh, I think it's changed me, definitely. I mean, you, you look at things, you, um, you know, you love things differently and, and people and just the way that kind of your everyday life, the way you look at everyday life has definitely changed. Uh, I would say, though, since I've got out of the sport, I, I wouldn't say it's changed a ton. I feel like, like as a driver, we have obligations with the sponsors, the owner, you know, the teams, your commitment each week to be prepared for each weekend. But um, other than that, you have your motorhome at the track. You have, um, you know, you're always flying from, from track to track. So that's pretty quick. And when your family comes along or stays behind, you're still, it's only a couple days each time so I think as the drivers go they get to spend like I always got to spend plenty of time with Tanner a lot of time with Tanner and I still do today um, so that's that's really nice you know to be a, a driver the crew members 
the guys, you know, there's a lot of people who are with NASCAR and maybe away from their families a lot more than some of the drivers. So that, that probably gets really hard on them at times. Um, but yeah, from where I was, it's all, it's been really good with Tanner since he was born. He's four now, it'll be five in October and, uh, it's absolutely flying by, um, till, you know, so far. So it's probably only going to go quicker. It seems like each year goes faster for me. So it's, uh, it's pretty interesting, but he's a great boy and he, um, yeah, he's just, we just have a lot of fun and, and he's learning and just things nonstop. I love that about NASCAR. I would say that we're the most family friendly sport, especially like you said, it is hard for the crews, but when it comes to drivers and just the accessibility for families to be there and be part of the sport, it is very special. I'm glad to hear you say that since he was born, it's been good. Yeah, for sure it has. Yeah. Casey, you look great. You sound great. And um, really hope you got me excited. I really hope to see you back at the track number one, but also maybe behind the wheel soon. Yeah, I'll definitely be back at the track. Um, you know, as soon as it gets going again, I'll be back and uh, when when we can all come and, and enjoy it. Uh, and as far as driving, who knows, maybe down the road, I'll, I'll get another chance to do some driving. But um, yeah, I'm in a pretty good place right now. And just keep working hard to try to find things because I like staying busy. And so that's been a, one of the tougher things is to to stay busy after being having so much going on with racing for so long. And then to just kind of stop one day, it, uh, you know, I wasn't really prepared for that. So as time goes, it gets better and better. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be back at this track soon. Good, Casey. Well, go play with Tanner. I know he's running around with race cars on the wall and having a good time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yes, take care. For more great NASCAR on Fox content, subscribe to our channel. It's somewhere right around here.